Oh, and here we go. Welcome to my lovely home. As you can see, I just woke up and we are in my base. Yeah, so this is a fairly big base that you built. Um, first, we have a bunch of different things that you added to the base. Uh, right now, we have a lean-to that you just interacted with and you got to set your spawn point there, but that's also a place where you can rest and uh, pass the, the night if you want to. But we have a lot of vanity items that you built. We have some chairs and a little sconce right here for light. Yes, I love the way that a lot of this came together. Um, I love the fact that you use things that you find, such as the bug parts in the chair. I love turning off the lights. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> turning lamps and torches on and off are great. But so yeah, we just so woke up right things. now and it's morning. So the sun hasn't really risen yet. So it's a little bit uh, on the dark side, but uh, uh, first of all, you need to, as you can t tell from your scabby in the lower uh, left-hand corner, uh, your thirst and your hunger meters are a little bit low when you first wake up. So you have to, you know, when you start your day, you have to drink and you have to eat. And uh, you just uh, drank a dew drop from the dew catcher, which is a building that you can place in your base. Yeah, That's and a little spider web thing that you saw there. And that was really interesting, that entire idea, because I never would have thought of just collecting dew that way but it almost looks like a dream catcher, but a dew catcher. So I like that. <laughs> and yeah, and, uh, this is one of my favorite moments is uh, when the sun starts rising. The yeah, way you're that up it high right now. The... And it's really, really <sighs> cool vista shot of the yard. And you can see how expansive everything is. So all those pieces of grass, uh, you know, there's, there's things to explore everywhere. And it's a very cool handcrafted environment. No, and you can see you cool. built your base near a baseball. Yes, it was one of the nice landmarks. Um, so that way I had a reference point to come back to. And then here we are uh, finishing up my base. I didn't have time to finish quite before I recorded. So we get to put up some walls. <laughs> yeah, so this is an example of how you build your base. And we have a tile grid that you can build on just for ease of use. And all that base that you built is made out of grass planks. And those are just one of the resources that is required. And you can get grass planks by cutting down grass blades. One of the things that I do want to point out is that I had to keep a stockpile of extra materials because I noticed at night, some of the creatures would come out and attack my base. Even if I was just at home, like, hey, we're chilling. Why, why does that happen? <laughs> So another thing that uh, we're doing here is we're building up a ceiling um, and the ceiling is made out of uh, clover leaves. So this is another resource and the structural elements are also made out of weeds. So you have to cut down weeds to, to build some of the structural elements of your base. Now, I really like the pattern, the fact that you guys laid the clovers over each other to make it actually look like a roof tile. Yeah, it's it's a you know it's just like little little things like that. Um, you know, you can customize your base uh, and really express yourself through a lot of different vanity things, um, and really build out a really really cool base. And there's you can see there's some defenses that you can build as well, such as a spike trap. Yeah, that comes in handy uh, for like I said at night when the creatures attack. I can wake up and then just go harvest body parts <laughs> of anybody who got stuck down there. So uh, you ventured out and you got a little snack here. This is a mushroom that you, you just picked up and ate. Um, when you start you know, your day, you do, you do get hungry. So uh, the mushrooms aren't really a great source of food, but it is a, a tasty little snack that you can get. And the mushrooms will grow back over time. Ha! Interesting. Ha! And this is what I like is when you're ha! chopping down items you actually get exhausted during that part. So you have to take a little bit, a little bit of time to go ahead and build that back up before you can chop. And then the fact that it breaks down um, into easier parts to carry is really neat. Yeah, and those weed logs are too big to fit in your inventory. So you have to haul them around. Uh, <laughs> and when you are really small, physics acts a little bit differently down here. And, you know, you can haul big, huge objects and some things are just too big to fit and the weed logs are an example of that. Yeah, I really like um, the way that the view changes in both first and third. 
because in oh, third yeah. you just look super strong and in oh, first yeah. it's just like yeah oh, look yeah. at all this stuff <laughs> i'm carrying <laughs> yeah that's a good point too uh so we do have first and third person cameras uh so you can play however you want if you like to explore in, in third person you can do that if you want to you know fight insects in first person you can do that as well so it's you know it's up to you how you want to play cool and, and uh, you're getting ready sorry to go and you're out. playing as hoops right now um just just adding that in that's one of the four selectable teenagers that you can play as yes and at this time i want to remind you if you guys aren't asking questions feel free to start posting questions in discord in twitter or in twitch and mixer so that way when we get to the q a part we can answer some of those questions for you which will come later but i do want to ask about that juice drop um yeah so because i've yeah go there's ahead. a lot of man-made objects in the world so uh and each one has its own unique thing like some are just there to build a base around and, and act as a cool landmark with juice box for example uh you can find tasty juice out of the straw and it will drop down and you can slurp it up and it's a good source uh you know, you don't get a lot, but it's a good source to refill your, your thirst and your food. But there's a lot of cool things uh, in the in the yard that you can find um, that have different properties like that. No, it works out. And speaking of things that you can find in the yard, like that juice box, where do some of those concepts come up with? Because I've noticed a lot of it is made specifically for this game. Yeah, like everything the, is the handcrafted top. and unique, and we're making everything, you know, for grounded. And there's a lot of story elements for those man-made objects. So it's it's one of those mystery things. If, you know, as you play the game, you'll kind of have an understanding of why these things are in the yard and who lives here and why are the, all these things placed here. So there's a little weevil. Uh, weevils are little insects that you can find. Uh, they actually will sniff out mushrooms. So if you don't kill them like you did here, uh, you can actually follow them and they'll lead you to different mushroom patches. But you can also you know, hunt them and kill them and build stuff out of their parts. And I've noticed with the mushrooms, while they're a great resource to have, they don't really do a whole lot in terms of uh, filling your hunger gauge. Yeah, they're just so like little tasty snacks. So, you know, <laughs> you actually eventually you will want to hunt insects. They they definitely give you more nutrition. Uh, so you right now you're you're finding uh, or hunting an aphid, and you're uh, you know aphids are are meaty and they're good good source of food. So you'll have to roast them up and you have to cook them. So there's an extra step involved, uh, but mm -hmm. that that's the preferred way of of you know eating and grounded. What's uh, nice too is I it it's very early on to where you're able to kill like the weevils or the aphids to where they don't attack you so you feel bigger. But I realized later when you get to ants and other larger creatures, you need some armor. So I'm starting with this uh, clover armor, but I haven't really progressed past that. What other types of armors can we expect to see? Yeah, so clover armor is is what we think of as like tier zero armor. It's your first starting armor that you'll find. We do have more advanced armors. We have tiers of armor sets and each armor has different properties depending on your play style. So for example, if you wanna play a more tanky character and go in head on and fight insects with, with melee weapons, uh, there are different options for you. For example, there's the acorn armor, which offers more protection. So there, there's three slots. So as you can see, you have a, a head uh, piece and a armor piece, chest piece equipped. There's also the leg slot, and those will show up in the lower left-hand corner. Yeah. Um, so you can see how much uh, protection you have left. Uh, and that's cool that you uh, talked about the different types of play styles. So that way, when I hop in the game and play with my friends, we can each play a different type of way, but still all play together at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we are talking about the single player part of the game here, but there is a, you know, if you want to jump in and play co-op with your friends, you can play up to four players um, and you can choose each one of the four player characters to adventure with. And a lot of things change depending on single and multiplayer, but, you know, the entire game is, is definitely playable from a single player and you can go through the story at your own pace or you can have fun and, and build a big base with your friends. 
So you actually did a pretty good uh, shot here. Uh, <laughs> so you, you, you were able to kill the aphid with your bow and arrow. I think that's like my proudest moment. <laughs> 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 I was not expecting in the fact that I did it on one of the first few tries. I was, I was very proud. So thank you. <laughs> Yeah, one thing that uh, for oh, people that are really looking at the stream, one thing you'll, you'll notice is on a lot of the resources, you'll see, uh, you know, an axe and a hammer. Those are the uh, tools that you'll need to harvest those items. So we just want to make it very easy and apparent to, to tell you like, hey, you'll need this to be able to, to harvest this thing. So you'll see that occasionally pop up. Um, and it's one thing that we've been working a lot on to communicate that to the player. I think it's just a cool addition to the survival game that that you know we're looking at all different ways of improving the survival game with Grounded. No, and you guys also did a really good job in streamlining the crafting too, because I don't know if um, you remember when I was picking up all the the items, all the plant fiber. Not only did it tell me how much I picked up, but it told me how much I had in total, which helps when you're trying to keep track and trying to craft a whole bunch of stuff all at once. Oh, yeah, yeah. Finally got those pants on. I am fully armored <laughs> out. <laughs> and you can see we have storage. So, if you know, your inventory is only a certain size, so you'll have to store stuff. And here's another cool addition that we've never shown off before is the, the smoothie station. So the smoothie station is a, a unique uh, utility building that you can place down in your base. And it's it's a experimental experimental crafting station where you can put bug parts into it and mash it all up and you can get something out of it, uh, which is a smoothie. And you can put any three ingredients in there and see what you get out of it. Um, and most of the stuff is very beneficial. So it's a way to buff your character in combat. And, you know, uh, you can just try out different things. Uh, one cool thing that we're doing is if you do find a cool smoothie that works out really well, it will actually remember that in, uh, recipe for you. Um, so you don't have to remember all those things, you know, all the different ingredients that turned into a cool smoothie. One of the things that I loved about that smoothie station when I first saw it is the fact that I get to use bug parts that I may not have a purpose for at that time. So it was really nice to be like, I don't have to throw this stuff away. I could just make a delicious smoothie. <laughs> and it might be gross, but most of the smoothies offer at least some nutrition. Yeah, I think that one that I just crafted uh, replenished some health, which will definitely come in handy when I go exploring. Oh, here we are trying to equip my spiky sprig. So Spiky Sprig is a club, it's a tier one club weapon. Yeah, we also have a spear that we have. <laughs> yeah, I think so far I've been able to craft and equip a spear, the Spiky Sprig, and a bow and arrow. So if you noticed, uh, time of day is passing in, in the world right now. And we started in the early morning and now it's about midday here. And the cool thing about Grounded is that the environment will really change depending on the time of day. So different insects will change their behavior. So some will go to sleep during the night, some will go to sleep during the day, some will patrol at night um, and they'll wake up and hunt. So depending on the time of day, uh, you'll encounter different things. So you have to plan accordingly. So if you're going out and adventuring, depending on the time of day, you might need to equip different ha! things or prepare differently. So it makes a lot of sense. And I like the fact that it, you guys, the game makes it really easy for you to figure out what time of day it is, which is why it's so bright right now. And the shadows <laughs> kind of come like directly down. Yeah, the visuals are just amazing. I love just watching the sun go, you know, overhead and, and watching the lighting. Oh, yeah. Oh, and so we're we venturing we over towards the first oak tree. spider on this oak tree. Yeah, so we're over near the oak tree, and there's an ant hill here. Um, okay. Some ants, but there's also oh. here's an orb weaver spider, and it's a pretty dangerous oh, creature no. to fight early on. Uh, and the orb weaver will shoot a web at you to to stun you in place and hold you in place while he'll munch on you. And as you can see, <laughs> you you probably want to be better equipped before uh, fighting orb weavers or spiders in general. We have a couple different spider varieties. Um, and 
now it's time to, to talk about the death mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as, as you can see, uh, there's a small penalty to death. It's not a huge penalty. And once you die, you'll have to go and retrieve your equipment that you were carrying on your backpack. Yeah, you want to get like the player the like up and running really quickly. You guys, there's an icon on the screen, so I am not completely lost. So if I went off exploring, didn't know where I was, it's pretty easy to go find my backpack. Whether or not it's going to be easy to get to the backpack is a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but this one looks yeah, like it's sneak okay. in there. Perfect. Take all my stuff, get ready to equip it. And then run away from that spider. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing too is I love the way that you guys got uh, grass and clovers to move when a big creature was walking nearby. So it kind of gives me a tell that oh, there's something over there I may not want to go greet. <laughs> That's one feature that we're really proud of that we were able to pull that off. So all the grass that you see here is interactable. Every little bit is interactable, and it's one cool thing that we were able to do to have large insects really you know show off how big they are by displacing the grass and it's a really cool thing where you can see on the horizon if there's a huge creature lurking about yeah it's definitely helpful and kind of scary when it's a uh, grass close to you <laughs> here we go we are getting ready running away from the oak tree because i think i was done with the orb weavers <laughs> and oh well, it looks like we got a ladybug on a grass. Yeah, the ladybug think... looks like it's stuck up there. Yeah, but you know <laughs> what? That's part of the reason why we're doing this early access July 28th, right? So that way we can get the players in the game playing so that way they can help us find all this stuff and make the game a game that we all want to play. Yeah, so, you know, th there's going to be a little some issues here and there um we hope to have it as polished as we possibly can have it oh, yeah. but we want to involve the community as early as possible in the development of the game so it, you know everyone can help shape the direction and the future of grounded right here we fought a little mite uh mites are just hostile little pests that will you know bite your face off if you're not paying attention if they group up they're a little more dangerous Oh, you can hear them come, too. Yep. <laughs> and I love this, too. I love the fact that if I have forgotten to equip something or accidentally thrown it, I can at least try to punch before running away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so punching is always the last-ditch option. Um, not recommended, but if you run out of your weapons, you can always go in and punch. There we go. So going back to some of the story, it seems that I seem to be standing under some sort of machine. Is that something we'll find out later on? <laughs> yeah, so that, that is a story element. Um, it, it, there is a lot of, uh, you know, as you can see from the trailer, there is, you know, a lot going on in this yard with a lot of different layers. And that's one thing that as you play through the storyline, uh, you'll find more and more information about what's going on about the mystery of the yard. Who put you here? Who owns this yard? And, you know, we introduced the robot friend in the game. His name is Burgle. And we both mm -hmm. have Burgle shirts on. So, yeah. <laughs> so, Burgle is uh, definitely a, a favorite of the team. Um, and we're happy to finally get to talk about Burgle. And he <laughs> is uh, your robot buddy that's helping you throughout the adventure. So, not only do we have this awesome world to explore, but we do have a story that takes you through the different environments and there's reasons why you're here. And that's really important to us, you know, as, as a studio um, to have a rich story with awesome characters. Oh, you can see the grass moving. That is a much bigger spider this time. Holy jeez! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can see that we do have banter with the characters. So if you're playing alone, you still get the banter from, from the character that you picked and they'll comment on the, the things going on in the yard. Um, and it adds a lot of personality to the, to the character and to the adventure. And that was a hunter uh, uh, wolf spider. And those guys, you just wanna run the other way if you see those. 
Yeah, I also liked back there that I was able to go inside the soda can and go oh, explore yeah. inside that. That was neat. Yeah, all the man-made objects are really fun landmarks to build bases around. Hey. I think I have and if, if you want to build a base team. inside the, the so can as well and out. make it your house, you can do that. It offers good protection. Um, now we're in a different, slightly different area in the yard, which is what we call the flooded area. And there's a sprinkler nearby that has a crack in it and has been leaking for several days and has flooded a big portion of the yard. And mm -hmm. in this flooded area, there's different... Uh, flora and fauna that you'll experience and find and different way, different materials that you can craft from. And there's one little creature that has been, uh, you know, kind of uh, bugging you, which is our gnat. And the gnats are, are just little, you know, pest insects that you can hunt for food, but they also try to bop you um, and give you little, we call it the gnat kiss and bop <laughs> you off objects if you're uh, on top of something. And yeah, they're they're, not they're more fun. dangerous in swarms. Yeah, I could see that because you 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 see the one and you can keep an eye on it and just kind of attack. But back there, once we had the four, there was no way. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have toys in the yard too, so that there is a reason why all these things are in the yard. Oop, and there's a big spider. Oh, oh he chased <laughs> me down. Oh, and that's it. I died. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fun. Um, I guess we will get ready to get into the Q&A session. I do want to remind everyone that Grounded will be coming to Game Preview on Xbox One, Game Pass, Game Pass for PC, and Steam Early Access on July 28th. And also, if you have not signed up for the Xbox Insider program, it might be a good time to do so. So while we've been talking, we've been showing you guys gameplay. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. You guys have been posting questions on different areas, and so we will go through and answer some of those. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's see. Let's find one. Let's, okay, here we go. Uh, Kaiser Sorcerer 37 from Twitch wants to know, is there multiplayer mode? And I think we kind of briefly talked about that. The yeah, so play. yeah, there's a multiplayer mode. Um, so it's a cooperative adventure. So if you want to team up with three of your friends and adventure together through the story, you can do that. If you want to build a base and just defend uh, your base from giant insects, you can do that as well. You can enjoy everything from single player. Uh, the, the single player experience is fully featured as well. And things tend to change a little bit in multiplayer. So we, we tend to look at different things and see how we can make them better in multiplayer. But you know, the game is fully playable and single player and it's a great experience too. Yeah, I know I definitely had a lot of fun recording this and uh, playing the game for a few hours, trying to figure it all out just by myself. So I can only imagine how much fun it's gonna be once I can get some friends in there. Let's see, Krusty Crack from Twitch wants to know how long this game has been in development. So we've been in development for a um, little over a year and a half right now. Okay, that's for uh, how, how big is the development team? Can you remind yeah, me so, just so that way I know? Yeah, it's quite unusual for Obsidian. So this is the smallest game I've been a part of, the smallest development team. So we're, we're about 14 people. Um, and, you know, typically we have 30 to 60 to 70 people on a development team. So this is by far the smallest project I've been, uh, you know, thankful to be a part of. And, you uh, the development timeline, um, you know, it, we've we started working really on this after Pillars of Eternity Two Dead Fire shipped, um, and we started to put together the pitch and and the ideas on the the early stages of Grounded. And now, for that's such a short period of time too. When you think of developing a game, and what you have to show already, I know I'm impressed. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Yeah, it is very impressive. I, I'm I'm so thankful we have an awesome, talented team. No, They're everyone on that job. team's great. Oh, yeah. Let's see, Nibi Hobby from Twitch wants to know: Is oh, there an yeah. ecosystem, and will different bugs eat each other? <laughs> yes. So that's one awesome thing about Grounded is that there's a huge world. You know, outside the view of the player here, there's tons and hundreds of insects doing their own thing. So they all have different behaviors depending on what type of insect. And those behaviors might change depending on what you're doing and 
the time of day and other factors in the game. So for example, the ants will actually like an ant hill, what you would expect. So they go hunt and search for food and they can communicate through a pheromone system and they actually will go find food objects and carry the food back to their base. And eventually, like once you start gathering a lot of food, they're going to see your base as you know a good source of food. So, you know, that's one example. Um, and then another example is just uh, we do have predators in the yard. So there's a lot of predators um, and each predator has, you know, eats certain things. So they might go hunt different creatures and you'll encounter these, you know, these insect on insect battles uh, while you're exploring. And it's a lot of fun to either, you know, sit back and watch it happen or take take a part in the, in the, the battle and shoot your side. <laughs> Place your bets. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's see, Twee 3 brick from Twitch wants to know, do your tools and weapons degrade over time or have to be repaired? Hmm. Uh, yes, yeah, both. So we do have uh, weapon durability and tool durability and they will end up you know, wearing away and you'll have to either repair them or craft another one. And it's okay. something that we're still working out. So it's like one of those details that I think based on Player feedback will get a lot of adjustment when we're in uh, game preview and early access, depending on how you know people feel it's working out and length of time of durability and things like that. Oh, that's good. That that'll make it really nice then. I like that. I like the feedback part. <laughs> Let's see. Everyone, and that's their name in Discord, wants to know if there will be a hardcore mode for a more gritty survival experience. Yeah, so we do have, uh, you know, difficulty options. So there, there are a few difficulty options. Uh, we are talking about even an extra hard mode. Um, I don't think that will be available day one on early access because I think there's a lot of tuning before we oh, want to yeah. like, actually have people oh, yeah. go through like the, the super oh, yeah. hardcore mode. Um, but we do have a hard oh, difficulty yeah. which ramps up the combat challenge. And we do have a, a more easier difficulty that uh, you know, slows down some of the survival aspects of the game. So if, you know, you want to have a more easier time and slow down the pace of the game, you can do that as well. And the other thing I would like to also say is we do have a creative mode. So if you just want to build a base and, you know, deck out your, your, your digs in your house with cool stuff, you can do that without worrying about insects destroying it all. I think that's the base, uh, the mode for me, because that was one of my favorite parts <laughs> is building the bases. <laughs> and speaking of base, uh, Lucky Thirteen X from Mixer wants to know how long it took to build that base. I can answer that one. Um, I, the first few times I started playing around with building bases, I would say maybe about two hours, and I would have a decent sized base with a little fence, uh, because not only do you have to map it out, you have to go out and collect all the different materials to build the base. Um, which is fun in itself because then you get to explore the backyard at the same time. That particular base, I think, took me about an hour and a half to two hours only because I would kind of known at that point where I needed to go to get the materials needed. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Let's see. Edge, what is that? Edge Omderade, sorry if I'm butchering that. Uh, from Twitch wants to know if anything is randomized, auto-generated versus handcrafted. There are a few elements that are randomly generated. Um, we are like trying to figure out a good balance of that. The entire world that you see here is definitely handcrafted by our talented artists um, on the team. Uh, John Lewis, who's an awesome artist, he's our lighting, visual effects, and world builder. Uh, he's done an amazing job of adding tons of detail to the world that you really want to go explore all these cool little nooks and crannies and find like cool little secrets and hidden things throughout the yard. Um, on the flip side, we do have a couple elements that are randomized and we're, we're definitely discussing that as a team, uh, what ways that we can add random elements onto this mix. Um, some of the things that are randomized are just creature behaviors in general, like they're very unpredictable. Um, so that that's, you know, every time you play, you'll encounter different things as, you, as you're playing the game. Uh, there are a couple ingredients and other things that you find that will be randomized as well. Oh, cool. no, I like the, because the handcraft part makes it so that way you guys can help shape the story and everything else. But adding a little randomized would make it a little bit more 
not interesting, but peculiar. <laughs> yeah, surprising. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, let's see. Gal Galsela from Twitch wants to know if there is going to be ultra wide screen support. Um, I, yes. So I don't know how wide your widescreen is, but we do test on widescreen monitors like ultra wide um, and mm -hmm. making sure that the the user interface works with those ultra wide screens. So that's something that we do, you know, we look at and we make sure that that stuff scales properly. Let's see, and I will say I have seen it on an ultra wide monitor, like just testing for fun and it looks gorgeous. Like I kind of want to get one of those now for my home for when the game comes out to play on. <laughs> Let's see, Bullet Kenny on Mixer wants to know if there's a way to change the spiders. They know some people won't play games with spiders, and since this is a game, everyone, um, since this is a game, everyone might cause some issues with parents coping with their kids. Yeah, so that's a great question, and it's one thing that we are taking very seriously here at Obsidian is making sure that everyone can enjoy this game, and we realize that there's a, a large percentage of players that do have arachnophobia. And one thing that we are looking at for accessibility is adding an arachnophobia mode that you can toggle on when you start the game. And it's a client side setting. So uh, even if you do have that arachnophobia mode on, um, you can play with any of your friends. Uh, so it won't be restrictive in any way. And we are looking at ways and reducing that phobia um, and that fear that you get when looking at our, our large giant spiders. And we are working with the Microsoft User Research Lab and uh, you know, doing a lot of testing to see what triggers that phobia in people. So it's something that we're taking very seriously and it's something that's very important to me. Um, I do have arachnophobia. Um, so it's, it's something that I think is uh, you know, a, a cool thing that we are trying to do to make sure everyone can enjoy and play the game. No, I really uh, appreciate you and your team taking time to do that, too. Um, I personally don't have it, but I do have friends who do. And the fact that that is a concern is a pr very appreciated by the community. I know that. So that is nice. Let's see. Um, Captain Longball from Mixer wants to know if this game is easy to learn. Um, I will say there is a tutorial. It does take you through. Uh, we are tweaking that still. But for someone who doesn't play survival games too often, I found it personally pretty easy to pick up and just start playing. The game makes it very easy um, to let you know which tools you need in order to get certain materials, what items you need in order to craft certain items. So I didn't really feel too lost playing it. And it was a lot of fun learning the things because they didn't hold your hand all the way, but they gave you enough to where you felt proud when you figured something out like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely something else that we're taking very seriously. It's just the onboarding experience because we want everyone to enjoy playing the game. So we do have a lot of tutorialization. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's something that we are adjusting as, as time goes on to see how much and how little we need and what things we do need to tutorialize. But uh, on the flip side, the team is all, you know, experienced survival game players. And we do like that depth and that core element of survival games and adding a lot of that cool stuff that, uh, you know, experienced gamers and games that gamers that want to challenge. So that's something that we are, you know, we want the game to be easy to get into, but hard to master. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that. It, it makes the progression too better. Once you, you play the one way, you're like, oh yeah, now I have another step up mode to do. Let's see. Uh, TR Dice Cream from Discord wants to know if there's any insects to attack the base, or is the base building just a cool home building feature? Yeah, so that's one thing that uh, at night or at different times during the adventure, yes, creatures will definitely uh, you know attack your base. And as you get stronger and if you build a bigger base and get more powerful through your items and things that you're building, your weapons, uh, the insect life will start to see you more and more as a bigger and bigger threat to them. And they'll be sending more hostile and more dangerous creatures to, to come at you and, and destroy your base. So you'll have to build up some defenses. As you can see, we do have a spike trap out front, um, but you know, you'll have to maintain that your defenses and making sure that, you know, insects can't get into your base and, you know, loot your stuff, take your stuff um, and, and 
destroy your home. Or eat you. <laughs> and eat you. <laughs> Let's see. Ice Pants from Discord wants to know, will character creation or customization ever be added to the game? So right now, that's not in the plans for uh, character customization. So we do have four characters that you can pick from that they're very diverse. Uh, and we want to make those characters in the game. So that's very important to us as adding that uh, rich characterization that we do at Obsidian. And they're a lot of fun to, to play as. And so that's what we're currently looking at. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're not open to having more options on how to customize their look and their appearance. And uh, one one thing that I, I really like is all the different armor sets that you can you can use to kind of personalize yourself and, and your appearance. But uh, for more vanity like things, we currently don't have any plans right now, but that might change in the future. <laughs> the has spooked me for a second. <laughs> Let's see, your strophy from Twitch wants to know. Uh, what in opinions opinion sets us apart from other survival games? So there's a couple things I think that really set grounded apart from other survival games. I think first is just the approachability and the setting of the game. There, I, there's not been a game that's set in a backyard before where you have to survive against insects. I think that's a really cool idea. No, um, there's a lot of possibilities oh. where we could take this game for the future. Already, it's shaping up to be really, really fun with a lot of cool things to to uh, ah! um, to do in it. But the other thing that sets it apart is we do have a rich storyline. Um, I think that we are using our expertise in this area to really build out a cool story that you can go through. We're not sharing a whole lot, as you can see from the trailer. There are elements that might be unexpected um, if you if you checked out the trailer um, and. That's part of the layers of the game that you'll find and get to explore the mystery of what's going on here. Um, and then lastly, I think the other cool thing is just the, the ecosystem part. You know, the, we want to make sure that this world feels like a living world with insects doing their own thing. And there's not, you know, I think that's a, a huge difference from other survival games where the world feels fairly static. Um, you know, this, this world is a big simulation. I think that's a lot of fun for designers and for players to, to take a part in. You'll, you'll encounter tons of unexpected things. Um, you know, you can really drastically change how the, the simulation plays out as a player. And I think that's a really fun thing to explore. Let's see, Sushi XXX from Mixer wants to know, is there time progression or is time based on the storyline? There is time progression, so every night, you know, another day ticks by, uh, and the day-night cycle right now is about, uh, for a full day, is roughly 40 minutes in length, and nighttime's a little bit shorter than daytime, um, so while it's dark, it's, you know, it's roughly, you know, uh, you know, it's not quite half and half between daytime and nighttime, so it's a little bit uh, lighter for more of the day, and uh, yeah, the, the story does progress um, on a different, you know, depending on what the player is doing. So it's not time based. So we don't have a, like a hard deadlines for when you have to hit certain story beats. Perfect. That's always good to know. Let's see. Aunt Kaz from Twitch wants to know, will you be able to build your base any size you want? Yes. <laughs> There are some things that we are exploring for structural elements on the height of the base. It's something that uh, our programmer, Brian McIntosh, is currently looking at to see if there's slightly more things you have to think about when, when building up a larger, like big, huge tower to the sky type of base. Uh, so there might be some restrictions on that moving forward. But right now, you can build a huge base and there's no restrictions punch you on the, next the, the you know, size ah! of your base. I have built some pretty large ones, I will say, in my <laughs> time playing, which has been impressive. <laughs> I enjoy the fact that it, it hasn't really limited it too much. So if you want to try to build it with the resources you have, you can. So let's see. Um, here we go. Uh, Rope Duckers from Twitch wants to know how many players can be in one instance. Uh, right now, four. So four players active at at one time in one yard. So that's one storyline, uh, you can have four players. So it's you and your, your three friends. 
or just you. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, Warlock from Twitch wants to know, will there be dynamic ah. weather? So right now, there is not dynamic weather in the game. That's something that I know that the, the team really wants to explore because I think there's a lot of cool ideas that you can do with weather. For example, what happens if it rains? How does that work in this game? Um, rain and other survival games, you know, usually you can uh, collect the rain and use it as a source of clean water. In Grounded, it might be a little more dangerous <laughs> when it rains. So it's something that we, we won't have on launch for early access, but and it's something that we definitely would like to add at some point during development. I can only imagine what a raindrop would look like at that size. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Zolte Kutstiff from Twitch wants to know if we can tame the insects and mount them. Oh, uh, that's another one of those features that won't be in um, initially, but I, I definitely want to do it. It's, it sounds like a ton of fun to be able to tame um, one, to have pets, insects as pets. I think that's a really cool idea that we want to explore. Another one is, um, you know, maybe you can craft some, some sort of uh, way to ride the insects, um, depending on what, you know, type of insect you want to ride. It might change what you have to craft, but it'd be really cool to have, you Holy know, geez. The, the ability to uh, mount up and, and ride on uh, an ant, for example, as, as your uh, like little riding horse um, and you can get around a lot faster. So it's something that we won't have on uh, the initial release, but I know that's on our radar to get to at some point. Excellent, that's good to hear. I know I've been curious about that. <laughs> Let's see. Um... Kunder Dumpin from Twitch wants to know, is the game gear progression based or do you get perks and skill trees? So there's a, there's a little bit of a mix. Um, right now, we're, we're definitely focused on gear progression. So that's Let's finding new resources to craft uh, more and better armors and weapons out of. And the story will take you to different environments. And in those different environments, you'll be able to uh, find new materials to craft stuff out of. On the, the other side, we do want to explore ways of adding progression on the characters themselves, either through skills, perks, uh, some sort of way of buffing your character uh, with permanent stats. And that's something that the team is definitely discussing every day on how to how to tie that in with the rest of the mechanics of, of the system. Turkey just one from Twitch wants to know, if you guys are talking about co-op, do you have to reach a certain point to start co-op? Or can you start from the start with someone? You do not have to reach a certain point to start the co-op adventure. Uh, you can start a new, brand new game. And even before you launch and start the game, you can join in, in with your friends in a lobby where you can you know collect all your friends and then start the game from the lobby. Perfect. Well, I think that was that's all the time that we have for the Q&A. Thank you for all the answers. I know I learned a lot. <laughs> Perfect. And, and thank you, everyone. That... I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked to be able to do this. Uh, I just want to say thanks for having us. Uh, stay healthy and stay safe during this time. And it was great to show off Grounded. Yes. No, it's been great. Uh, before we leave, I just want to remind everyone, follow our socials at Twitter, Facebook, at Grounded the Game. Be sure to join our Discord at discord.gg slash grounded the game. Um, grounded will be coming to game preview on Xbox One, Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass PC, and Steam Early Access on July 28th. And again, if you're not a part of the Xbox Insider program, you should sign up. I believe we may be starting something soon as in May. Who knows? Sign up now and you'll find out. You'll be some of the first to know. Other than that, I think we're good to go. Thank you guys so much for coming. It's been fun and be sure to keep the conversation going with us on our socials.